Today I'm going to be installing a custom steering wheel on my S550 Mustang. So right over here I have my Shelby GT350 and if you walk around right behind the driver's side as you can see I already have a custom wheel installed on here that I installed quite a while back however I never got around to the shift lights. So since I do have to disassemble a good portion of the steering wheel to show you guys the shift light install I might as well show you guys the install of the wheel while I'm at it. The one thing that's a must need when installing a steering wheel is one of these. So this right here is just a screwdriver and it's pretty skinny and long and you want that so you can get through the holes like I'm going to show you in a little bit. So let's put this one to the side and let's pop our hood open. So now that the hood's open what we're going to do is I'm going to pull up this plastic tab right over here so I can access the battery. So now after pulling up the plastic tabs as you can see I can lift up on the battery right over here. So then we're going to use a 10 millimeter socket to unscrew our negative terminal. And the reason being for wanting to unscrew your battery before starting on this project is because your airbag could detonate if your battery is still connected when you're unplugging the clamp. So make sure you guys do the battery. So now the next step is these holes right over here is you're going to stick the screwdriver in and there's going to be two tabs right behind this airbag. And you can push them in and it'll unclip this. So you want to do that on each side and then this will be unclipped. Boom, so just like that, I got this all off. So um, there's this one switch right over here that goes to your horn, so you want to unclip that. And then you want to unclip these two uh, things right over here. And as you can see, they're color-coded black and uh, yellow. So yellow goes to yellow, black goes to black, obviously. So then just carefully, very carefully set your airbag aside. Do not like throw it or anything like that. So now if you're installing a new wheel on your vehicle, your next step is going to be to... Um, just move these up and this right over here I believe is a 24 millimeter socket. So you're gonna wanna unscrew your wheel with this socket right here. And then your trim pieces and your buttons. If you remove this black piece right over here, which you can grab a screwdriver to pry along the edges with and it'll pop off. And you can fully take out and pop out these trim pieces and insert it on your new wheel. It seriously does seem complicated at first, unscrewing all these things and popping it on the new wheel. But trust me, it is super easy and I had no issues really doing it. So now after you do those things, you can also pop off the trim pieces once you pop off this black lining all along here, right over here, by just simply prying it up. So then right after you do that, you can insert all your new trim pieces, screw back on all of your buttons, and now you'll be at this step where you need to wire your steering wheel now. All right, so like literally an hour later, I finally found 12 volt. When you're measuring with a multimeter or a voltmeter in your S550 Mustang, make sure your ground, don't use one of these points on the wheel as a ground with the voltmeter. I use like a screw on the door and then I was finally able to measure the 12 volt over there on the wheel. So it's the prong on the bottom row, second one to the uh, right side on the bottom row. So that looks like it's a yellow wire. It's in a vary for your car. Depends what car you have. It's in a vary from car to car. All right, so as you can see, I use this quick uh, connector right over here that I bought from Amazon, and it looks like it latched onto the 12 volt wire, and then it's grounded right over here. So uh, it's time to fire up the car and see if it works. This is just totally raw reaction. Well, I just switched around these wires because it turns out that this was actually the negative and it was connected to there, uh, which I wasn't sure of because the company who sent the wheel out it needed to be extended a little bit the wires so I used two red ones because I couldn't find another black one but anyways oh let's give it a whirl son of a bitch. all right guys check it out here we are the next day now um, so it looks like with this wire over here and the previous wire I was using these wires are way too big this is like a 12 gauge wire which is connecting to something super small so there's way too much resistance in this wire because when you have a way bigger wire like this it's actually uh, worse when you have a small wire because you may think that yes it can handle all the power it needs 
However, that creates too much resistance in the wire, which doesn't allow enough electricity to flow through here. So this was like decreasing the voltage significantly, so it was not getting 12 volts. This wire right here is pulling around 14 volts. So that's how I know the wire appears good, but it was just the connection between here and here with the voltmeter where I saw that significant power loss. So now I have this wire right over here, which I'm not sure how many gauge it is. It's very similar to the ones down over here. Um, but I'm really hoping that this will do the trick and that this will pull enough electricity and this will not have too much resistance. So let's give it a shot. Boom, just like that. Uh, I kind of just wrapped it around. I tried to use a butt connector, but it was way too big for these wires. These wires are just super tiny you're playing with. And I found the best way to splice this wire right up over here is with your wire cutter, just very gently just start scraping off the coating because you really do not want to cut through this because of how thin it is and it's really easy to. So just really gently just keep on scraping the wire. It may take you like 10, 15 times of scraping and then you'll see wire eventually, but that's honestly the safest way to do it. Uh, so now let's hit that power on button push our clutch in uh, you're joking how did the battery die the battery's dead son of a Woo! let's go woo, woo, woo. let's go we did it we did it. Battery was not dead. I just had to put it back onto the terminal. It was just tripping out. So, sheesh. I need to stop saying sheesh. I say it for the memes, but it's probably not a good thing to say. I say it way too much. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. But man, that's sick. That's sick. Let's go, baby. Let's go. So now as you can see that airbag lights on because we've got the airbag just chilling right over there. So let's just tape up everything, uh, stick it all back together. Remember to disconnect the battery again when you put the airbag back on. All right, so there we go. Electrical tape right up over there and down there. Good, battery's disconnected. Let's gently pick up the airbag and connect it black to black, yellow to yellow. And then remember to connect your horn, which is white and black cable right over there. So, I'm such an idiot. I just put this on without realizing that I never put this part on. Check it out guys, it looks so cool. As you can see from right over here, we have 366 miles on the car. We have a video coming very soon. We're gonna go to a video shoot with a lot of epic cars, like 30 epic cars, GT500, C63s, M5s, the whole dealio, and probably some supercars there too. So stay tuned for that video. That's gonna be epic. And we should have our break-in miles by then, so we're gonna be able to rev this thing all the way up to 8250. Boom. You may ask, why is the airbag off again, Nani Garage? Well, that's because I made a mistake. And that is, these buttons that illuminate when it's nighttime, they only turn on when it's nighttime or day. That's how they run. It's based off of the outside brightness. And I wired it to that 12 volt that controls these. Turning on the headlights does not help it. There's no setting for it. So it looks like I need to find another 12 volt to use, which sucks. Cause I went out on a drive and I'm like, what the heck is happening? Why are the, we why are the lights just off all of a sudden? Pull back into the garage, they turn back on. Pull back out, they turn back off. And I notice it's, it's all the button illumination. So time to find another 12 volt. All right, so after checking everything with the voltmeter, it seems that no, no slot has 12 volts aside from the slot that controls all these dimming lights. However, there was one with eight volts, which I am not doing because that is wired to the horn. I mean, there just gotta be another 12 volt power source here. So uh, let's hope that this one is the 12 volt power source.
All right, guys, so check out the lights. The car isn't broken in yet. So I can't take it past 4,000 RPMs, but uh, in 100 miles it will be. So stay tuned in the next video. The car will be broken in. But check out the shift lights in action. This is set to 5,000 RPMs in case you're wondering. Um, and the reason being for it being set to 5,000 RPMs is because I wanted to see just how close I could get to the red line thing and see the full effect of it. See all the lights on the wheel and stuff. So that's why it looks like this. But I cannot wait to get some wide open throttle pulls all the way up to 8250 RPMs and see this thing in action. Let me know down below in the comment section if you guys have any questions on the wiring process at all because I have spent so much time on the wiring process and made so many mistakes with it. So if you do have any questions, I think I'm a pretty good person to ask. So definitely do ask me down below in the comment section. I'll try my best to get back to you. So with that said, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe to this channel. We got so much epic content planned for the future. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Peace.